So good morning, good afternoon, and welcome, and good evening, maybe, wherever you may be in the glo around the globe. So uh, welcome to another beautiful conversation with another gorgeous guest on Intimate Conversations. And our guest today is Chantal Curlin. So welcome, Chantal. Thank you for having me on your forum. I love watching your, your content, so I'm very blessed to be here. Thanks, Mandy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I love doing it. And it's um, it just started with uh, wanting to honour the pioneers, those who've been holding this light and earthing in for so many years, you know, and just to actually honour them and, and bring them forward a bit more so that people can be introduced to them and get to know them a bit more too, if they don't already. So that was the whole plan behind it. Um, and it's just, it's lovely. I love chatting with everyone and getting to know them more because we might have followed each other on Facebook you know we're lucky to have been able to have met in, in person um, living in the same country and not too far away from each other and in, in respect to distance but many overseas you don't sort of get to know them unless you have these types of chats so it's been lovely yeah no I enjoy the real and raw yeah me too and we used to set you up with a whole lot of like you know you give us a whole lot of questions to ask and that sort of thing and now it's just like no let's just chat and see yeah. where the conversation goes because yeah. yeah it's great it's mm. just great well, so <clears throat> I will just introduce you mm. uh to everybody Chantal <laughs> and so <clears throat> Chantal embodies a wealth of knowledge that encompasses grief menstrual cycle, space holding, womb wisdom, coming of age, intuition, spirituality, and sexuality. Chantal creates safe spaces for people working with trauma and awakening to be seen and heard and deeply held. Chantal works <laughs> intuitively in all her spaces Chantelle is also the creator of Wild Roots Adventures for Children. She has a strong passion for working with children and connecting back to the earth, free play, and off-track adventures. I love that. <laughs> After oh, the passing you. of her treasured two-and-a-half-year-old daughter, Sailor Rose, in a drowning accident and experiencing a profound awakening, she has spent the last seven years embarking on a deep grief healing journey. Living womb wisdom practices and returning to the wisdom and flow of the feminine, and has dedicated her life to growing, to growth, learning, and unlearning, and being in divine service. Chantal authentically supports women to remember, repair, and deepen her relationship with the sacred waters of life by tending to endings and aligning with purpose and letting go of what no longer serves us. <laughs> I can feel that. That is, that's deep work. Yeah. Yeah. It has been a journey. Um, yeah. It's just hearing you say that is like, wow, I'm just going to pat myself on the back. <laughs> oh, absolutely. absolutely. Sometimes I don't do that enough. <laughs> no, we don't tend to no. do that enough. And it is, it is, and this actually, again, when I go back to this, um, it first started in intimate conversation, started in person. We would gather in a hall somewhere. Mm. I'd, I'd get a guest in and we'd have an audience and, and talk and chat. And one of the things that came up for all of those people that came in as guests was that it reminded them of their journey and how they'd got through it, where they were today. And the same thing, that mm. bit of a pat on their back because... They, you know, we tend to just live it and not look over yeah. it really a lot. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah, for me, I've been noticing that a lot lately. It's like, gosh, I just need to stop and um, acknowledge the work that I do. And um, yeah, it's really important to do that. And um, yeah, and reflect. absolutely. Mm. Mm. So Chantal, I always start with the question at the beginning for everybody about whether you were awake or were a child when you were mm. a little girl. And if so, if not, whatever, just, just fill us in on how that dynamics was in your in your family growing up. Yeah, I can actually just hear my mum right now, her voice saying, <laughs> Chantal, ever since, you know, she'd always say, since you were a baby, like, since I was born, I was always out of all her children. Um, 
I guess, highly sensitive and um, empathic. Mm. And like she, very, she said as a baby, I was her best baby and I would just wake up smiling and um, just always absorbing everything. I, you know, when I went to school, I would take on the teacher's emotions. I'd take on the children's emotions. Um, highly empathic. And it wasn't until what, like, seven years ago I found out what being an empath was but um yeah I would feel the pain of everybody and um mm. animals elder, especially animals and the elderly I really yeah. would um um have a lot of sorrow for just everything around me the world seeing all the you know propaganda in the news that was terrible as a child just absorbing all the doom and gloom yeah uh, but you know I was um you know always very um, I would have I remember having dreams as a child and like ast astro projecting like mm -hmm. around the house <laughs> and I just I didn't know what it was um, yep. but it was more I, I didn't really hear spirit or see things it was just I was highly sensitive um, to um, energy and right. I had a very connection with nature and you know my home growing up was a farm so I was raised in a farm and I know why I picked being in a farm because I just need to be in nature. Yeah. So when I was with my father who had a farm, I had horses and, and, you know, I could hear the sheep. I, I remember as a child, we would, um, dad would um, get the sheep ready to be slaughtered. And I would actually go and like, let them go the night before. And oh, beautiful. Um, yeah. And like, I, I remember when all our chickens and roosters would be killed and it was just torturous for me. And um, my family used to love eating, like my dad would kill the live, the, the you know, the stock and we'd have spits um, um, on, you know, and things like that. And I used to look at my family and go, I'm not, how am I related to any of you people? <laughs> like, I don't, and I would be, I'd be like, I'm going to be vegetarian. I'm going to be vegan. And I just, they all called me the weird sensitive one. Um, oh, it's just Chantal. She's sensitive. But now I'm like, oh, okay. I could just feel very deeply. I've always been able to feel yeah a lot yeah it's and it's such a privilege isn't it to be able mm. to grow up on a farm yeah and have that I used to go and sit deep down in the bottom of the bush mm. and just sit there and the fantails would come right at me and talk to me and oh my god I loved it I'd be there for hours while dad went around the sheep you know because we yeah. lived in town that had a farm outside out, out in the country obviously mm. Um, so we didn't live on it we'd go out and stay weekends and things mm -hmm. sometimes and all that but and when dad was actually slaughtering I'd be there with the tin collecting the the blood I know this sounds terrible to oh, set earling to set earling um, lines down in the creek oh, wow. um, for earling but yeah I get I get this I didn't like it I didn't like oh. the slaughter thing at all oh. but you sort of you know you you understand it when you're yeah. in it, don't you yeah yeah and I did and I did I just didn't take part in it and um mm. I couldn't eat eat it sometimes I would and but then I'd feel good but I mean I eat meat now like I've I've gone kind of full full circle with that with, yeah you know, a deeper understanding of you know mm. of it but um yeah it's yeah it was you know being with in nature as a you know I'd camp up put a tent in the back paddock and sleep there all weekend and just be so happy just being yeah. going bush I was always raised with the uh, my father had a, a sailboat so we'd spent a lot of time in the ocean so just you know with with the um wow, fish, so yeah. yeah yeah so I spent a lot of time in the um sailing and diving and as a child as well so I'm really blessed to have had that um that to ground me otherwise goodness because my mum lived in the city so she had I was in the city and the energy of the city and then being able to balance that with nature was yeah really now when I think about it yeah yeah gorgeous that's really lucky really yeah. lucky <laughs> you know yeah. that all of those elements the city the sea and the the mm. bush and nature is great yeah. yeah um so so now you offer groups and things don't you Chantal and that yeah. came uh, tell yeah. us about the the journey through though this the loss of your gorgeous daughter mm. and and I mean that would have just been I can't even go there it would have been just a terror mm. you know um and how you even get through it I don't know because I've never experienced it but mm. Mm. so um coming up actually her um anniversary in October so it'll be yeah. eight years well no seven years 
um since she, her passing um her transition I should say yes um, yeah some of those words man um but yeah. uh so she we I was in a um gosh I haven't shared this story for a while so just mm. um so I was uh actually quite a busy mum um this was before my awakening so I was quite asleep but struggling to live in the the matrix you know just being yeah. so empathic and um you know I dealt with a lot of depression and addiction issues as a younger young woman and um and that sort of thing but when she passed I was in a good place I you know I was married I am married same husband but I was deep into exercise and wellness um but more like bypassing I didn't know that you could actually heal trauma then I just kind of focused I would exercise a lot and didn't realize that you know I'd created another addiction there but um <laughs> yeah. she, we, yes, we, we do she, yes we do yeah, yeah. we don't yeah. see it like an addiction really no, either do no. we when we're in yeah. it there yeah no it really was and um so anyway her it was a, a weekend that I had planned to take my children to the snow because they had never been and you know how expensive it is taking all your children to the snow. So we were ringing yes. up with friends, um, borrowing what we could, you know, big, big and borrow what we could. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I had to go to my workout. So I was like running around in the busyness. I've done my workout with her. And I'll never forget that that night, um, that afternoon, because she just was screaming and um, at the little um, playpen there in the gym that I worked out at. And she just wasn't herself. and. Um, I had to um, get home to pack the next day to go on our trip, but I had to pop into a friend's home who had um, some gear for me, but their, their home actually is rural and they had one of those, you know, those plasticky pools that are above the ground, but it was decked, but yeah. there was no fence. And um, I really didn't like going there because she, my, Sailor was a wild free spirit, a little girl, like she would just always bolt, just, into everything she was she was hard work actually um just yeah she was, yeah. She was one of those children that I was always like man you are so special um and I was busy talking to the woman who owned the property getting gear and all the other children were in the house and um I thought that she was in there it was such a, a quick trip um in and out and um as we started talking, I went back into the house and I had said to the children, where's Sailor? And um, and in that minute, I just, this wave came over me and I ran, I was running around and then I had remembered the pool. I went to the car first, which I worked through now because I she loved playing in the car. She would always go in the car and twit around. And I was like, she's probably in the car because I'd left it open and she wasn't. And then I remembered the pool, but it was like, October it was quite cold it was nighttime so I remember seeing the big full moon actually um and I was like there's no way she could be down there because you've got to walk all the way around by herself in the dark and then I was like no 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 after searching and then that's when I had seen her um face down wow. in the pool and um I just ran jumped in and grabbed her and um like I had done CPR I'd worked on super yachts when I was a younger and so I knew how to do that and just worked on her and worked on her and frantically called the ambulance and yeah it was just absolutely horrific um I just yeah something I never thought in that moment I would ever be doing and there were all these emotions of like oh my god I don't think she's going to make it she was limp it was interesting though because that that evening um we, I had bought her Skittles or her her friend, her brother and sister had Skittles because they'd been to the movies. And so she had eaten all these Skittles, which makes me happy because her last meal, she loved <laughs> sugar, was but yeah, as I was resuscitating her, all this like red started coming out of her mouth. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's blood. But it was actually all the Skittles. And uh -huh. that made me feel really, that might this might sound strange, but it was like in that moment, I thought it was quite profound that, that was her last meal yeah I can get that actually you know? yeah, yeah absolutely and, um some people don't get it they're like Ugh. um but when you know you know yeah and um yeah the, the ambulance showed up and they managed to with the the um what do you call them oh the yeah. pads yeah pads um get her heart going so 
there was hope there was an, an, an inch of hope there and um, my husband arrived and then I was in the ambulance to starship and um, she was put on life support for four days um, oh. taking tests and that sort of thing and it was actually um, the 6th of October they wanted to take her off life support they said look we've done all the tests she's there's nothing going on in her brain and um, if she was to, to survive she would basically be um, paraplegic brain dead and because she had lost so much oxygen to her brain Mm -hmm. um and um yeah that whole experience in the hospital was so difficult um it was so sterile just everything about it yes totally get that too yeah and it it was really horrible and I I asked for medication because it, all my anxiety just came straight up that I had already been dealing with. And I was like going absolutely mad with guilt. Like I, I remember like smashing my head against the wall and trying, I was, I just, it was just horrible. I was like, what is happening? What is yeah. happening? Yeah. Um, how is this even ha- happening right now? And so I, they gave me lorazepam, which was the start of a big addiction. But um it kind of blocked the neural pathways of of like what was happening. Right, I was able yeah. to be present. <clears throat> well, not, I wasn't really present. My husband was more present than me um, in those days in the hospital. And then I guess it was the 6th of October was my birthday and my family and friends said, please do not turn her life support off on the 6th of October. It's her mum's birthday. So oh. they ended up um, doing it on the 7th. And before then they had actually asked me, you know, will you donate her organs? And I'm like, I, I, I was like, how am I having this conversation? How is this, like, what is going on? But m- me being as an em- empathic as I am, I was like, of course, if there's a child who needs them, but please, I want to know who this child is. And I'm sure if the mother or father wants them bad enough, they would tell me and they were just yeah. adamant. Oh, no, no, we cannot let you know that. We cannot let you know who they're going to. And um, that never sat well with Connor and I. It was, uh, you know, this, it was very uh, strange, the people who came in, like, in suits, like, just waiting for our daughter to die to then, because they said once they, if we're going to give her organs, once she passes, they said she'll only probably breathe for about eight minutes and she'll be gone. We have to take her straight away. Otherwise, the organs are no good. And I was like, fuck, wait, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I want to hold my daughter. Like, you're not taking her and, like. Yeah. But then again, I was like, well, this, I'm thinking about this child who definitely needs organs, you know. So, um, yeah, it was very bizarre. And I've done a lot of research around all the organ industry and and, it, and, I, and I'm like going, okay, well, that's, that's very interesting. That's another story. But um, yeah. but I, uh, yeah, so they turned her life support off and she continued to breathe for eight hours by herself. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah eight hours we were all with her and she was breathing nothing in her mouth nothing there oh. and she was breathing and my husband even took the children back to the hotel and then all of a sudden the breath started getting weaker and weaker and it was just painful watching her just having this slow breath and I looked at my husband and I said I was like I would do anything in that moment to I'd like pay for anything to to have her alive but knowing that she wouldn't have any sort of life, but it's kind of this moment of, is this what I would want for this beautiful soul in this body? Yeah. And it was very interesting because that day there was this girl in the outside in the corridor. She was on a breathing machine. She couldn't breathe. And she was like um, brain dead. And she was going back and forth our room. And every time she would, me and Connor would be like, why is she doing this? Is, it was almost like a sign, like mm. there's this place yeah. of like wanting your daughter to, to survive or releasing that soul. Because mm. I know, I know Sailor's working in, in the realms. She's a very high frequency being. And actually, you know, Jen, Jen Albertanor. Yes. So she, I had only met her a few a few times because her daughter, Seiji, was friends with my Lucy. At yeah. school, and I had met her a few times and anyway word got to her what had happened well actually Sailor got to her right Sailor came to her 
and yeah. you know how Jen works. Yes. And then she she messaged me and I looked at my phone. I'm in hospital and she goes, Sailor's with me. She's got something in her mouth and it's not comfortable. She doesn't oh. like it. And it was all the breathing tubes. Yeah. And she said, I can just feel her. She's running in and out of the doors because her soul was still in the physical. She hadn't left. And, yeah. and in that moment, I just knew. And I remember I said to Jen, how the fuck, see, I swear a lot, sorry. How the fuck did you <laughs> look at me? How are you so brave to do that? Like, yeah. I could tell it was the scariest fucking thing I ever did. But I, Sailor, was adamant that I let you know. That's beautiful. Um, so, and I know Jen's okay with me sharing this. Um, yeah. Because, you know, this was a big piece of Jen really stepping in, into more of her work. Because mm -hmm. Sailor works with Jen too. Yeah. Um, so it's all how it all kind of weaved was really profound and um, and I knew in that moment and that's when because uh, this was before I had Sailor had taken the um, sorry I'm going back a bit no that's okay. but when my husband and I looked at each other and I had her in my arms and I said baby girl you can go mm. I love you and you can go and that minute we said that she went no oh. and I I can feel, I like literally could feel her soul now when I look back. Yes. Just move. Move, yeah. And then her body was like, this was just her body, her beautiful body. But, and um, yeah, then, and when I look back now and feel that, I, I remember that being my, the most painful but beautiful thing I've ever experienced, you know? Um, yeah. But the fact that the doctors were adamant and said that she would not there's no way she would survive they mm. didn't know what to say and it's like you know there's more there's a lot more going on than some brain tests you know yes. you know we're a soul in this body mm. um so yeah that was <laughs> and I was going to go that deep into that I haven't shared that in a long time it's um, beautiful yeah it is beautiful and thank you for that I I so understand we, my ex-husband's um, very best friend, uh, we all lived together in, you know, same town. Um, and he just had a brain thing, he had a headache, and next minute he was in a brain hemorrhage and, and behind the eyes, so they couldn't really do anything for him. Mm. He was on life support, and we went over, and they were the same, you know, there's nothing going on there. We've had, I have to get five or so doctors to, you know, back it up um and we're going you know need to turn his support off mm. and talked about the organ thing yeah um it actually didn't happen until they turned it off and then they came in and asked mm. um and yes and oh my goodness and it just seems so cold afterwards yes didn't talk to us before um his wife wasn't really comprehending much so we were doing all the conversation stuff um and they never said a thing to us until they turned the machine off and then we were just sitting there waiting with them and saying our goodbyes and things and then they came in and said before we take him away can we ask you know they asked about his organs my husband just flew at the sky it's like oh my god it just it was just seemed so heartless and cold and it was just felt yeah. really wrong <laughs> yeah but I you know I got it and so did Lee later on he apologized for his outburst but it was just so hard very yeah. hard yeah I don't I don't think your organs were donated I think we said no but yeah it was it's it's not a fun space to be in and like you say so sterile it's like mm -hmm. one of the beautiful things that would have been lovely for you with her is to um for Sailor was to be in nature you know, to have been out there rather than in that environment, eh? But yeah. it's not always going to work. It's not if work. I could look back now and knowing what I know now about death and if I was ever had to experience something, death in my family, I would do things so much differently. Mm. So much differently. Um, yeah, yeah, what I've learned. And <clears throat> I don't believe there is death. There's death of the physical body and... Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is, well, you yeah. Will um but yeah that that was that's been a big journey in itself the the, mm. the awakening and and remembering yeah and, yeah and so that that was my pivotal because I was put on like I was a mess man like I was 
I ended up with delayed grief because the lorazepam that they had put me on in the hospital, I needed to keep taking. And every time I would get a wave, I would just take another one. And I had my mother living with me and, um, you know, we had Sailor with us for a week while we were grieving, which was beautiful, but it was just, I, it was all a blur. Like, I think I was 37. I do not even remember that whole year really of being 37, but it was um, just the, the, the horrible guilt that I had for not protecting her was probably the hardest part. And also a lot of shame for the diet. Like I thought that people were talking about me and like the community, which the community community oh, was I lovely, see. but I had created this, this, this story in my head that I, I couldn't even leave my house, that everyone was looking at me and I was a bad mother. Gotcha. And yeah. It was just horrific. Um, so I just kept medicating until um, I remember like I was, oh, man, it was just so horrific, just wailing and wailing and wailing for days on end. And, you know, I, at one point I tried to kill myself. I took a whole lot of pills and my husband walked in and was like, what the fuck are you doing? Like he, yeah. he, he, he let me have it, which was what I needed to hear. Like, you got these kids here. I'm like, what the fuck <laughs> yeah. are you doing? You know, and I needed, I needed that. Mm. And I went, oh, and I vomited them up and I had, I had, you know, mental health people come over and everything they were saying, like, was horrible. Like, they they cried when I would share my story. Like, they could not hold space for me. And I'm like, right. fucking cry. You're not allowed to cry. Um, or they would come over and start talk, sharing things like, oh, your daughter sounds like my niece. Um, she's just like that. And I'm like, is your daughter alive? Like these are the things that when you're in heavy grief, you don't want to hear your story. And and what I noticed through my whole grieving process is no one knew how to hold space for me. Yeah. No one could hold space. They'd throw in their projection of what grief is or what it's like, or most people would freeze. Like I lost, a, you know, a lot of friends kind of moved away from me, but I probably pushed a lot away as well. But it wasn't ideal. What I was going through wasn't ideal. It didn't fit yeah. into their world or into the you know how life yeah. should be like um so yeah I ended up I said to Connor I sailor has she's coming back she's coming back I need her back and I remember pulling him in we had sex <laughs> one time because like he came out in boils and I had a sore on my leg that turned into a boil like our nervous systems no sorry yeah. our nervous systems were just broken yeah. We were both drinking a lot. We were eating bad. We were just we were just dying. Yeah. As a, couple, as a family unit. We all because I, I have other two other children. We slept in mattresses for like probably a year, all of us just you know, in the lounge room, just trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Yeah. But I remember pulling him into the room. I said, I'm bringing her back, and we actually had sex. And um, lo and behold, my next cycle, I'm pregnant. So the doctors had said, there's no way that you should have been pregnant because um, this was only 12 weeks after, or no, eight weeks after, so when I had a period, yeah, she had yeah. passed. Wow. So that also went against everything, you know, with um, being able to be able to have a child. So I ended up falling pregnant, but that ended up being my um, catalyst to healing Yeah. because I was like, I need to come off this medication. And I went completely cold turkey and that was horrible. It was like coming off heroin. I couldn't eat or sleep for like six days. And I actually, you know, all, all I remember just pulling, like pacing the house back and forth. I was pulling my hair out, um, getting really angry and just so much. And I was like, oh my gosh. And the, the doctors wanted to put me on more medication um, while I'm pregnant to get me off that medication and actually put me into a facility. And uh, my husband actually had a big no and um he's really into plant medicine and he made oil cannabis oil for me and medicated me hourly and it was actually that that got me off all the meds wow cool in that moment the, the medicine wor was working with me profoundly and I got my appetite back and I could actually sleep mm, um beautiful and um yeah the sleep and just like the uh, to relax like because you're waking up I was waking up probably um, in the middle of the night with PTSD. So yeah. I'd have these attacks and I'd see her floating and gasping for air. 
So mm. I, you hear about men who go to war. And so I was having all these flashes come in, all these flashes. But at the same time, I was also working with Jen and doing a amazing one-on-one -on -one body work with her. Yeah. Um, um, real quantum healing, which um, I was so open to. And I just knew, and it was just, it was working. Like, I'll, I'll never forget this one session. She, I came to her and I'm like, the, they want to give me all these drugs because of oh, I'm seeing all these images and the PTSD and the images and everything. And then she held me and she called in all my ancestors, all the women in my lineage. And I, I could feel them on the bed all around me and they were holding me. And then she, we, she had created this album. And then we put all the images in these albums and then we closed them and all my ancestors and grandmothers and great grandmothers, they were holding me and I can remember so clearly. And we closed the album, the, 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 the um, images stopped after that. Wow, cool. You know, That's and funny. yeah. The, and um, I was so open to connecting with Sailor. I'm like, I want to connect with her, help me. I am, I'm because I've always been so right brained. And I yeah. know with doing energy work, you have to be open for it to work. You know, you have to believe. Um, and I did, yeah. I knew. Yeah. And that was my healing journey was, um, you know, I will always, to the day I die, I, if that, you know, if Jean hadn't have come into my life, it makes me want to cry. And um, open me up and help me um, to see also myself, but also the shadow that I was holding, the deep guilt that I carried. And, you know, she was the one who told me, you, I'm not only was I feeling my grief, but I was grieving everyone else. Yes. All my, my husband's grief, my, um, my, all the sailor's nanny who came over and she was crying. I could feel her grief. I could feel my, the grandparent, my mom's grief. I was just feeling everyone. And I felt bad mm -hmm. for everyone. I couldn't even be with my own being such an empath yeah so it was like working through all these deep wounds that I had already had which has been a process in itself um and learning my own power and and learning to love myself mm. being the biggest catalyst to being able to do the work I do now so that was kind of like how it all started and then it progressed from from there um yeah does is that making sense absolutely yeah. absolutely um it's, it's such you know I mean what a beautiful gift mm. that you know sailor not just even coming in and being with you and in, in human form in that way with you for that time but the gift that she's given you and in, in moving herself into the next into her next phase um and the deep healing that's come in from many other wounds underneath all of that eh because it's it's you know, once you start unpacking, yeah, God, yeah. it just gets deeper and deeper, doesn't it? Continues, and you know, she, her passing was my awakening, and I know that was contractual, and um, I have work to do in this lifetime, and she works with me in the other realms, but she's one of my biggest guides now, and I have such a deep connection with her in spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel her and work with her. And she doesn't come through as a little girl. She did, like, as I grew, as I evolved and yes. understood more, she started changing form from being a little baby. And now she's, like, just this light being who's had many lifetimes, you know? Yeah, yeah. Many lifetimes. And um, and sometimes I need her to come to me as a little baby, and she does. And that's because I never want to lose that that grief. No. That, or I, 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 I love my grief is sacred before my grief was connected to guilt it was connected to shame it was connected yes. to resentment it was connected to anger yes. it was connected to rage so I've been working this I guess you could call it the path of the goddess yeah <laughs> up, up the past seven years has been real a real profound um journey into the goddess into the priestess um into the the, the deepest wounds and um and uncovering the um the um suppression within my being of many many remembering many lifetimes of being a healer of being the wicked witch of being um you know of also hurting children and not being safe and, yeah. and not being the protector of the innocence and mm -hmm. I know that in this this lifetime is my um is my uh calling yeah. is to be the holder of the protector of the innocence and I think that's oh I know that's why I've my whole healing journey when I started doing work was working with young girls and yeah. you know, I hold space for children um, now, 
and um yeah working with the innocence is and being such a fucking protector of them is um really my calling in this lifetime and bringing also bringing self um holding space for helping people come back to that place of innocence and and um joy but you know beautiful. yeah yeah that's beautiful and I know a lot of us don't want to let go of the grief because we feel that connection is going to be severed too to that person and and that's often not the way but to unpack it like you're saying the anger you know in the grief and the the rest of it it's like that that make that cleans it up so that you can actually grieve and it's it's genuine pure grief rather than everything else that was on top of it as well yeah and And I find that with women that I've held space for it's very difficult um you can you know I've holding space for women who have lost children because it's actually they'll know when they're ready but mm-hmm. I find a lot of women it's they're not ready to to that because I feel like they're they're going to lose that connection with their child yes and it's, it's it's also comfortable being in that almost victim energy yes and, and I know that place it's it, you feel like I remember when I was coming out of victim and I was coming into self I had guilt for that I had guilt for not you know feeling you know I I always see the stuff that comes up around um when you lose a child you'll be forever you know all these grief things and I'm like that's not my truth yeah I'm not I do I will not suffer for the rest of my life that is not what my daughter wants my daughter lives through me she is an aspect of me so all her greatness and all the powerful she was so she had the biggest no her boundaries were so fucking strong she was way (laughs) stronger than me in this physical and she was like And I, you know, I didn't have any boundaries. I didn't have any no's. I was a pleaser. And, you know, I'm like, I take everything of her and she lives through me. I am her legacy. You know, Mm, it's like if we can can switch that from, you know, being a victim or or, or a miserable for the rest of our lives, because, you know, losing a child is the worst thing. Well, we could actually look at the other way and make it be the most powerful, most empowering and take it, become a better you and and empowered you. And to, yeah. But I mean, it's not easy to keep, to bring that message across, and only people are ready to hear that when they're ready, or maybe never, yeah, they're never ready. Yeah, I think more and more people are ready now, and I don't know. It's it's a tough one, and I even having these conversations, I was really, I had, I was scared to because I didn't want to upset anybody. Yeah, like, she, that's bullshit. Like, how can she not be in pain? Like, you're selfish. Like, all these things would go through my head, but it's like, I. I know, I know, and from the deepest of my being, my truth and my connection to her and and the woman I am today is because of her, you know? It's like, and that's enough in itself. Absolutely it is. Oh, my goodness. That's so beautiful. <laughs> <clears throat> and just you helping other women too, you know? I, I know somebody that I will definitely mention you and head Mm. here in your direction lost a beautiful little 18 month old um just last year um and that was that was devastating to us all but and in such a shock like the medically no reason for her to have actually passed um she and I and I just saw it as as such a gift I said she's chosen to do this this was her her actual choice to but why you know and I said because you're going to get so much from this. You're going to grow so much. But of course, they're not in that space right now. But yeah, and it's almost it that's, be wonderful. The, that's the choice point. It's yeah. Like how, you know, when you carry this burden or this pain and then it starts affecting your life and your other children and your relationships, it's like, how long, you know, mm-hmm. how long do we want to suffer? You know, yes. yeah. Um. So yeah, it's I'm now I've been holding space for women um, and um, doing one-on-one sessions, um, womb. Um, so when I, I work, so I work very intuitively. Um, so I can feel people's pain and the yep. shadows very well because I do a lot. I've done a lot of shadow work. Mm-hmm. Very, 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 very deep, deep. I've gone to the pits of freaking hell. <laughs> so I can, I can, I can hold people there. But I can also really, one of my gifts is I see people's like highest potential and their highest yeah. timeline. Yes. Yeah. So, um, 
so it's been able to weave with with both those energies um and give that um clear clarity through my channel through my voice back to them and working with sound and um and yeah movement um and i've just started working with um like sacred touch and sensuality and um moving into working around the yoni and that sort of thing yeah and trauma around the womb and the yoni with our massage so i love that um mm. and bringing back that kind of that sacred innocence of of um feeling safe in the body because there is so much numbness we've become so numb yeah um, and it's like activating that life force from in from within and moving through the density and the blocks to be able to start feeling again you know just yes. feeling <laughs> yeah because that's it we when you're the empath like you have been mm. like we are mm. you you're so you know it wasn't until I started unpacking a few things that I realized oh this is guilt <laughs> you know I'd got through a lot of the other emotional stuff but I hadn't recognized what guilt feel like felt like on its own you know as its own thing <laughs> and it's like that we've just we just take on so much and it, half of it's not even our thing it's not our stuff it's everyone else's and we just get overloaded we don't we don't know what's ours anymore mm -hmm. until you start clearing out that shadow stuff and recognizing too that like now I can stand in a very neutral space as you would be yourself doing um and I know Jen does in the sense where you can actually be more present with the person and your clients your your people um holding space for them rather than dropping into it with them yeah. <laughs> that, that yeah. doesn't that doesn't do any good oh, it's like yeah. that that's somebody else's place not yeah. not not ours yeah um and it's really nice to be able to get to that space I mean I wasn't there of course we all had to work our way through it by <laughs> doing the shadow work yeah, and the shadow work has been the pivot stuff. Yes, yeah, it's it is like absolutely. A little piece is being able to be comfortable in the shadow and to sit in other people's shit and not project as yes. well. So actually, it's okay. It's you're safe here. Like yeah. nothing here is gonna. I'm not here to judge you. Mm. I'm not here, and that's. I think we hold so much in because of the shame and because of the judgment. But it's like it's okay. Come to me and all the mess. Yes, I just had a beautiful woman message me this morning. You know, and she's like, I just, it's just, are you? Can't, it's too horrible. I'm like. It's, believe me I can hold you mm. you can't do this alone yes and it's like we can't do it alone anymore and no, the one thing I noticed when I was working through my shit was no one could hold me in that shit yes no? I know I know what and you're it saying was just projections yep. after projections and hell the numb like all these women I know who are getting medicated it's like oh mm. <laughs> or <know>. numbing um, <laughs> I know it's it's you know, and it's hard, I find, you know, I sort of go, I'm observing and, yeah. and I'm, and I'm seeing it, but I know there's times where I've had judgment because I've run a thought about it, you know, <laughs> and one of, of the hardest things for me is to see people taking this medication that I know is harming them, yeah. you know, and they think it's doing them good, but it actually isn't. Um, it's a hard space to sit back and observe and not say, you know. Yeah. Yeah. not try and get them to understand and, a different way and what I've realized is I can't <clears throat> no is not say what I think it's like go well this this is this and it's up to you you know this is your choice but mm. um, to always be there to offer a but I mean and it can be frustrating but it's again it's, it's their journey it is so many yeah. times I I hold spaces and people don't show up or but I can mm. feel I can feel them like it's scary like to me leaning in and just just showing up is sometimes the hardest thing it is it um, is the unknown mm. and uh, I know like I don't talk much about this in my I'm kind of you were talk. you had a show the other day and you're talking about how we need to come forward more and we kind of hide you know the people who are doing this work work and I know I do um but I, I you know I've had many judgment around being you know weird or what's that weird woo woo stuff mm. who's she how she qualified to do that all the things <laughs> that have stopped me from stepping into my work <clears throat> yeah like actually no I know and I know that the people who are meant to work with me will come yes and um this deep trust um mm. yeah so 
yeah so all of that has led me into doing this and this is years and years and years of healing um you know six seven years of 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 healing and, and stepping in and um and I also hold um one of my other passions is um I have a nature school that yes. I started I have four children <laughs> and um, I, love, I love going like <laughs> I just love being with kids and I love that rebel energy or yeah me too I do I going, encourage it with my granddaughter yeah. and it's like what but yeah. yeah I love it too yeah sorry and, and, <laughs> no no that it's beautiful <laughs> and being wild and free and a lot of these mm. kids that are showing up they're at school or they just they're, there's so much pressure put onto them and rest- and rules and boundaries and rules yes so their little innate spark gets put in a little box and um, when they're in my space they just they're safe and they're exploring and they're um creating friendships and like a tribe it's almost like tribe mentality and yeah. they all kind of work together and I just love it and um because I have got two boys and and two girls I'm like man, what do I do? Like my kids, most two of my kids are in mainstream. I homeschooled one last year, but they love it, you know? And I, mm-hmm. I do believe that, you know, we do need some of these kids in the mainstream to be to be lighthouses as well. Yes. You know? Yeah, yeah, and, for sure. And I'm not going to make them do something they don't want, but I also wanted something out for them, something else for them. So I created it, you know? So I created mm-hmm. Wild Roots Adventures and it just, it just, it's blossomed and, um, I have like 11 kids who come every Thursday and I've just moved it to my house here in Murawai. Um, so some good news is we just got our, our house um, put to category one yesterday because we were red stickered from the slips. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Cool. And we thought that we might have to move and leave everything, our land here that we called in after Sailor Pass, but we just got our white, um, we got category one, so we're allowed to live here legally. Yay. So that's been huge. That's taken a long time though too, isn't six it? Months. Really? Yeah, yeah. Six, it's been horrific. Six months, is that all really? Yeah. I mean, I felt <laughs> felt yeah. way longer than that. Well, for the wow. people who have been displaced and having to pay mortgage and rent, it's been very hard. Long time for sure. And yeah. Now I think fifty homes are being um bulldozed, like they won't be able to go back. So it's wow. huge. So we've been holding a lot here in Murawai. Um but it's uh, the children bring such a high frequency, and I'm so glad to bring this work to the land here and and heal in that way. Yes, really yes, heal. Yes, for sure, for sure. That's so beautiful. I just my little granddaughter. She's just started at a kindy here, and and you look in it from this. You know, when you were approaching it, it's like <laughs> really, <laughs> you know. And I thought, oh, okay, we're having a look. That was the day. Mm-hmm. Honestly, walked in the doors. The vibe was great, and it's here in suburbia, but they've got this this ah oh, the backyard in it, and it's closed in. It's very close in. Um, it's not a huge backyard, and it's all paved and um, pathways and trees, and and they've got their own space there. They just oh, it's so lovely. It's so lovely, but she's been clearing. She mm. the first few days and weeks she was in there, she'd come home looking terribly. <laughs> Like, you know, I, I know what it, what it looks like when I see people or somebody who's been trying to clear energy. Mm. And I could see that with her. Um, so I helped her to move a lot of it. But she kept going back in, clearing stuff around these children as well as the environment as well for them all. Yeah. It's so beautiful to watch it and to observe, you know, mm. her knowing what she's up to. She knows. And so this is in the school? Yeah, in a little yeah. kindy. She's okay. just three. Should yeah, be four yeah. in October. Oh my God. But yeah, so good. That's and there's quite a few different bush ones up here now, you know, that the kids are in, in nature and that like that. Yeah. The but, guidance that I got to create the space, it wasn't just me, but it was deep guidance, you know, as well, was bringing, anchoring I, my sister who's, um, and, and uh, Danny, who helped me anchor the spot. She's um got indigenous roots from Raro, like, like really bringing um, children back to the land, back to their Aww. innate wisdom. Yeah. And actually, what I wanted to add while I'm on here is my, one of the one of my guiding my guiding um, instincts to create the space because I, I call it like high risk play. Was um, like when my daughter passed, she like I wasn't in tune with the environment like I am now. Like my intuition yeah. 
was not in tune and um, being present and that sort of thing. But she would always be jumping in the water very, you know, into the ocean, but would always put her in those floaty things. Yeah. So, so that's a false sense of safety for the body. Mm -hmm. so I feel like she had just jumped into the pool thinking, you know, and so this right. is a safe sense of security that we put on children having boundaries or too much safety. So like really um, creating that innate knowing for children to feel safe in their bodies because their bodies actually know my two-year-old now I have around water and I've never put her in one of those floaty things. She's I've been there with her for her to fall, to get her, but for her to feel that, that in her body, that embodied mm -hmm. knowing um, and that primal sense that we have with um, danger. And yes. when we allow children to explore um, spaces without being told that's wrong or projecting our own stuff onto them, they can feel that innate knowing of safety with themselves. Yeah. Um, so that was another reason I really wanted to do this high risk play was um, connecting children back to that innate knowing because they're always told no, 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 wrong, do it, do it, do it. So they've got no connection. Yes. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. so true. I know I've I've just sidelined my daughters, you know, with their two children. I've got two grandchildren, one's 16, mm -hmm. um, my grandson, and um, and then my little three-year-old. And both, both of these mums, you know, they're great mothers, but there's just been stuff. And I've sort of pulled them aside and said, look, don't do that. You're going to, pro you're projecting your fears. Yeah. Yeah. you know onto her or him and that that's not fair <laughs> you know and and it's yeah they've, they've listened but it's you we just run stuff yeah you know we just yeah. run stuff and it's been this way for so long and the systems I know school didn't work for me and I was one of those who was in there helping to clear and hold light you know I, I knew that but it's not fun being in spaces where you you're just so you know shut down by the rigidity of the rules and the square box that you're meant to be in you know it's hard yeah, and I, these children I, need that free free space free play free life really all of us <laughs> I know and I, I was the same at school I didn't fit into school I hate absolutely hated school I never wanted to go I left at 14 I it was just a miserable time but I have some my two of my kids here love school and they, they just love it but um Aww. it's um there are a lot of kids who don't fit into that box who actually no. are way showers and they're the builders and they yeah. cannot be programmed and they cannot have that projection onto them because it's just gonna squish mm. what they need to do um, absolutely yeah. yeah and I I had um a vision about 13 years ago of all these young children being schooled outside of the mainstream <clears throat> um and pods is what I kept getting it was like having these pods of children yeah that were being taught by these gorgeous hearted women men and women um who were very connected to earth and to the planet and to this as a being um and teaching the children from that knowing and wisdom so learn teaching them to live with her not on her and mm. more in nature and um and that after the COVID stint you know the school system now is still behind they've got so many months of like eight months it's going to take for anybody to try and get a homeschooling agreement I don't know why we have to go through them anyway but anyway <laughs> um so you know with all these parents now that are taking their children out of mainstream and homeschooling them and and, and I see this now, even in Whangarei here, there's lots of little pods of kids that are yeah. all being homeschooled. Um, and it's just amazing. I love it. I love it. You know, bringing them back to them. They're all things. slowly happening. It definitely is. And then creating mm -hmm. the communities for that and the support, which I really feel like I'm kind of creating that space here. I have children who come here are homeschooled. I have children who come who go to school. But it's like it's going to be like the slow as the world, as we know, is going to yes. be changing a lot. And I don't think it's going to be very pleasant um, mm -hmm. in the coming years. But to have these safe havens for our children, and that's really what I feel like I'm anchoring here as well, is um, a, a, a haven for like a community to bring mm -hmm. the children. Um, if it comes to a point where it's like, hey, we need to get our kids out of school. We don't feel safe now with what they're projecting. 
and yes. have that as well. Yeah. And Chantal, just a <clears throat> question I wanted to go back to. The baby that you conceived in that moment when you're saying I'm bringing her back, do you feel that's her back? It's, it's interesting because I used to feel that it was her, but then I'm like, but she's also right here. Yeah. And I what I've come to, to conclusion with is all my children are, are aspects of her. I, I like not so much the old ones who were here before her, more because I I had Sequoia who came after her and then I fell pregnant again. I've got Kaya who's now two. And I feel like she's an aspect of her too. And like, yeah, it's, right. it's difficult for me to get my head around that one because I really feel like Sequoia is his own soul. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's the aspect of one though, isn't it? Yeah. That's, that, yeah. that's really what yeah. it is. And yeah. And then, I mean, the soul can be in three or four bodies on that's, the planet at one time. That's what <laughs> yeah. I mean. So, yes, yeah. it is definitely, I feel her, aspects of her in him and in Kaya Rose. Mm. Not in Kaya Rose of her, like, oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> and But, yeah, not so much with the older two, but I believe that these two new souls are aspects of her and because they're very, they feel like quite new souls. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting. I've been working a lot with the children and clearing homes for them. You know, they they have a lot of energies, entities, whatever we might want to call them, that come in and, and disturb them, particularly at night in their bedrooms, you know, when they're trying to sleep and things. And so I go in and clear, mm. <laughs> pick up what's going on. But I've had a lot of mums who have been, or parents, talking about these children having these horrendous nightmares you know that they that in terror like you can't stop them crying they're just absolutely petrified um and there's just a cluster of them they just kept coming in and coming in it was like wow and so I was obviously wanting to know why what was going on with them all what's the what's the the theme in this you know there must be a theme so one of the things that I've always been able to do, and we all can, is track a soul. So when I'm in any clearing work and I can't find the soul to come back in, if I'm clearing some other entity out of the body, I've got to go and find it somewhere, you know, wherever it is. So I'm tracking it out. Um, a lady who was being coming in and waking up in the, in the morning and she would be cut, you know, like, talon lesions all over her and bruises and something was happening when she went to sleep at night she was out out and in, in there having some sort of altercation so again I said to her well, you know tonight when you go to bed I'll know and I'll track where you're going which is what I did and we got that sorted but so so that's what I was doing with these children mm. I would track the the energy of them, their soul, and see where they were heading out at nighttime and what was going on. And what I came to realize, <clears throat> and this wasn't like, it was a lot of kids. I don't know how many, I couldn't give you a number as to how many I found the same, but it was quite a few. Um, and they were actually had, they were living two experiences, two bodies on the planet. Yeah. And what was happening was the one that I was assisting was in these beautiful loving environments like you and your husband would be providing for your children or are providing mm. um where they're loved and they're cared for they're heard they're, they're nurtured you know all of that and it's a peaceful environment we haven't got war here the mm. other body was experience war zone yeah and the nightmares was the activity of the war zone going on which was their nighttime and our nighttime their daytime and more activity going on and all the things and so this was their terror they mm. were in that those two spaces and one lady in particular had an 18 month old and they had to walk this child everywhere either drive it somewhere or push it around in the push chair to actually get it to sleep at any point in time during the day or night it just cried and would not sleep and and if it went to sleep it was just it was just waking in terror Oh. And she said to me, "Can you? what can you do about this? When I explained the other body of it was in this war zone. 
And I said, I can't. There's nothing I can do until this contract, whatever's going on. And I felt like, she said, well, why is that happening? Like, why is that? And I said, the only thing that I can get in any feel about is that they've come in, they're very new souls. Mm. And they've come in to fast track the experience of this extreme you know beautiful loving love space to this terror and and destructive hate really you know um so yeah it's been very interesting and one was a, a, a one boy here was about eight nine he was old enough to to tell me things anyway and he when I asked him about the terror when he woke up at night time why is that he said it's it's dreams I'm in I'm having dreams and I said what are they about he said war and then uh, yeah. he confirmed yeah. and also he had found a I'm going all goosebumps yeah. <laughs> he found goosebumps. a helmet a metal helmet war helmet in a mm -hmm. second hand shop and he begged his dad to buy it for him oh. so he had this hundred year old whatever it was war helmet and um anyway and then his dream stopped he never had any more of these terrible nightmarish things. And that was when the person, the other body had their head chopped off. So he had he'd finished his life stint there. Yeah. And the boy now can just be him here. And, and he's a lot more settled, doesn't have the nightmares. It's very, very yeah. interesting. It's absolutely profound. Yeah. So, you know, they've come into... In, yeah you know I'm sure we've done all this too we've come in and, and lived out multiple lifetimes at once but these guys I think are fast tracking because yeah. they are new yeah and they wanted that experience for whatever reason but yeah hard I going having dreams like that and I'd wake up and there'd be a shell going off next to my head like a bomb right and I remember running and running and running and running and hiding and then yeah. explosion and then everything was gone and, and I'd wake up like being in and it felt like in dream time it didn't feel like a past life it felt like I had gone into like another yes another um you might have had another body over there too yeah it's a very interesting so and I that's all I could say to this mother was it's it's until this child finishes this contract whatever it is that that but how beautiful this mother intuitively knew to come to someone like you like most people would project that there's colic or their baby won't sleep because of this this yeah. and this and this and then create a chronic um thing for your child because you're yes. projecting something um, they did they did do the rounds yeah. they, went, they <laughs> yeah. did do I the round I mean, it's natural <laughs> But it's beautiful that they found you and did that. And I guess yes. that holistic way of, of healing, which, you know, it, it's mm -hmm. what healed me. And that's why, you know, I am so passionate about the work I do, because if you truly believe and you know in your heart, we yeah. can heal ourselves. We can absolutely Great heal man. ourselves. And we're so, like, the more I heal, you know, as like you said before, there's always more and more healing, like, we, yeah. we shift and change because as humans we, we're so much more intelligent than we've been dumbed down to be as you oh. know. and our, our superpowers we really do have um but as you know as we ascend and we are healing and um our dna shifting and changing we come back to to more wholeness yes um, yeah i'm just seeing like when all the little bits come back together it's like yeah <laughs> pieces just bring yeah yeah and it's, and it's so empowering yeah mm, yeah definitely yeah so how can people get in touch with you Chantel like what what's the best way of being able to get in touch um probably through Facebook or Instagram I mean I'm not really into the I try to do Instagram I'll like all of a sudden I'll like post stuff and I'll be on like whoa and then I'm like got nothing yeah. like, how do these people post all the time like I can't do that I've got a big family um yeah I'd be putting out content and stuff so basically Facebook I I was I'm I'm, I'm creating not a website but just a link yep. that will take you to all the other links um I'm creating that at the moment but right now mainly just Chantal Curlin at Facebook or yep. my Instagram is easiest and um beautiful I prefer like just doing like a zoom call like this and chat and to see if if we if we feel like there's a connection and mm. yeah but I just trust that the people kind of come and um, yeah. yeah yeah for sure 
and they do, eh? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And um, the more I trust myself, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's how it works, eh? Yeah. I know. And, it, yeah. and it, it just gets to a point where I know for myself, you know, I just keep doubting and, you know, mm. you say all this cucker in there don't you tell yourself all these stupid stories yeah and, and I'd be doubting and going into that space all the time you know and then spirit would be just reminding me but mm. look at this you know and look at that and they'd be pulling me back to have a look at things that why are you why are you yeah. doubting that you know and it just got to a point where it was like they just said to me stop the doubt yeah. so every time I heard myself going into any of that I'd just shut it up and and come back to that knowing of no, I've done my work. I know I've gone yeah. through. I'm now yeah. a university now. I'm like you know, yeah. I know what I'm talking about, and it's yeah. through experiencing that. That's how I know. So, you know, and so love loving the work that you're doing, um, Chantal. And and I know there'll be so so many other women out there that will be wanting to connect with you once they mm -hmm. hear this and see your um the sentiment yeah well, thank you thank you for giving me the opportunity um so welcome. it feels really beautiful um I felt like a really held um conversation and yeah it was really really easy so thank you <laughs> lovely yeah lovely no it's been an absolute pleasure and 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 a, and a deep honor too because you know as, as feminine and I think I feel I didn't know that I felt honoured to be a, f a female this lifetime. <laughs> you know, there were many times I was saying, I wish I was a man, <laughs> you know, yeah. just because they had more power out there. They seemed yeah. to have more power and yeah. be able to live their life the way they wanted to, whereas women weren't allowed to do that. And it was, we've had so much suppression. Yeah. And I know as these females, mm -hmm in many, many lifetimes that we've experienced, we've come through such abuse. And, you know, I've often found, I could say every woman that I've ever had on the healing table, energetic work on the bodies, mm -hmm. a woman is shut down from the waist down. 100%. You know, they sometimes, are just... Sometimes from here down. Yeah. So it's years of abuse and, it's, you know... And we look at, so deep. So, yeah. so deep. Yeah. So deep. And... I, yeah, just, yeah. just severing and a disassociation to self because of deep shame and deep trauma. Yeah, uh, we've just it's very up. sad, really, because I see a lot of it. I see a lot of women in that space still, but, you know, yeah. all our journeys, isn't it? You know, what we do with them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so beautiful work and, and just honouring you in that. It's just such a pre pleasure to have been speaking with you and getting to know you a wee bit more too, um, which is lovely. Oh, I have to add, you know, you have Bev, you have Bev on the show a lot. Yes. Yes. So Bev, <laughs> I worked with Bev as well. And so she, I'll, you know, give her props. She was, she was the one who helped me find my voice. Yes. She's good for that, eh? <laughs> yeah. And now I bring that through in my spaces now. It's like, I remember when I first started, um my journey I would speak like this my voice was so soft <laughs> <laughs> yeah and now I speak from my womb you know yes. <laughs> when we connect back to our body we yeah. can feel and we feel our power again and yep. then we can hold and rise mm. um but it's scary as fuck but we can do it we can it do is it, yeah. it is yeah. oh no it's great when you do too that it's yeah. just such a freedom oh my yeah. god yeah. And you feel like you know? yeah. and you can literally walk into a room and feel people going, Oh, yeah. Absolutely. They're looking yeah. before you even walk in the door. Yeah. 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 And to radiate yeah. that um is um yeah, I love it. It's I so do fun. too. It's a wee bit threatening to some men. I know that. <laughs> they really don't like the women that aren't needy. Yeah. Um but, you know, I wouldn't change. There were times I was thinking, oh, maybe I should just go back to our world. And it was like, no way, no way. Don't need men like that anyway. It's like, what are you talking about? Yeah. So, yeah. And it's, be, it's, yeah. It's I mean, slowly. it could be a whole nother conversation, but it's like journeying through that with my husband. Like, as I've been growing, yes. it's like, hey, bro, you got to keep meeting me as I grow. It's like, come on. Yeah, um, that's so um, wonderful. It can be challenging, though, for him because, you mm. know, men hold a lot more in 
I'm very open. I like to express and feel, but he, um, so that's been, yeah. Yeah. I've been able to hold space for that. My husband to, to work through his stuff as well. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Cause it's time, um, you know, for us to open our hearts again to men in that way, you know, mm -hmm. they've had their thing as well as we did. So yeah. Mm. It takes a lot to work through. Yeah. <laughs> but it's happening. It is. Beautiful. Well, again, thank you so much. And it was such a gorgeous yeah. Yeah. Lots and lots of love to you and your family. You. And um, yeah. We'll yeah. get on with it, eh, won't we? Get on, we'll get back to work. <laughs> no. <Nah. Yeah. laughs> Service. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so Beautiful. much. You're so welcome. All the very best. <laughs>